Hello everybody and welcome back to GTA 5. Today we're going to be customising the Overflot Pipistrello. It's our first drip feed car as part of the bottom dollar bounties update. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel guys, we've been customising all the new cars that released on day one this week and yesterday on Thursday the 4th of July, the Overflod Pipistrello which you can see here released as our first drip feed car, it's available on the Legendary Motorsport, let's have a quick look at it on there. Um, it costs almost $3 million, it's a two-seater supercar, um, and it is fully electric as well. The real-life car it's based on is the Estrema Full Mania, which is also an electric supercar. It has a few elements of the Hennessy Venom in there, and a few of the modifications available for it are also from the Koenigsegg Jesco. So let's take this thing up to the custom shop, see what parts are available, and then we'll take it outside and open up all the doors and stuff. Okay, here we are in the custom shop. Let's go ahead and apply full armor. Uh, the first custom option we have is a body trim. What I'm just gonna do very quickly is make the secondary color, which at the moment is black. We'll just go ahead and make that a blue color. We'll make it racing blue, that will do. Just so you guys can see what the secondary color is actually changing. So we can actually go ahead and make the whole trim primary colored. So the stock trim is like has all these black sort of accents, which look very cool in my opinion. And you can go ahead and make those primary. You can make them secondary, which you can see there is everything in blue. And we also have forged carbon. I think the Forge Carbon just looks absolutely terrible in this game. It just looks like Rockstar haven't properly textured it. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and leave that stock. I think I like the black. It looks quite good. We'll put on... Whoops. We'll put the race brakes on there. Engine upgrades. I wasn't really expecting anything visual, to be honest. We haven't had anything visual on any of the other cars. And this thing is fully electric as well, so the electric cars in GTA don't usually have any customization for the engine. Um, grill options are next. We've got the stock grill. We can go for a split grill, which um, adds a horizontal bar across. We can go for primary split grill, uh, secondary split grill, or forged carbon. Then we've got the double split grill. We got the secondary version of that. The uh, the splits are now going downwards. Uh, we got the secondary version of that. Then we've got the full carbon double split grill. We've got the cross grill. We got the primary cross grill. We got the secondary cross grill, and we've got the forged carbon cross grill. Uh, I'm gonna go for the split grill because um, I quite like that. Sort of little bar going across, it looks quite good. Um, the hood options next. Uh, now this thing is fully electric, as I said, so none of these are really going to make any kind of performance difference. They're more for sort of aerodynamics, I guess. Uh, but we've got the stock hood, we can go for a double vent, which just adds another set of vents in there, which looks very odd. We can go for secondary double vent, which paints the whole front of the car secondary. We got a carbon version of that. We got a forged carbon version of that. Then we got the triple vent. That just there's just so many vents going on. Uh, we've got a secondary version of that, a carbon version of that, and a forged carbon version of that. Then we have race vents. No rush we got a secondary version, a carbon version, and a forged carbon version. Then we have competition vents, so it's like the triple vents with those extra race vents up the sides. We've got a secondary version of that, a carbon, and a forged carbon. I don't like any of those. I think the stock vents are enough, so I'm going to leave that and I'm going to leave it in primary as well. The light options, we'll check all the lights out when we go outside. 
but that's where they are in case you're wondering we'll check if those little extra lights underneath do work some of them have been working in this DLC some of them don't uh, that's sort of the way it goes with Rockstar sometimes they make the lights work sometimes they don't livery options we've got white stripe so it adds a white stripe with like these arrows all the way over I don't know if that's like a real life thing that the Estrema Full Mania has, or maybe the Koning the Jesco or something has stripes like this. We got a black version of that. Then we got the Overflod White Stripe. So that's quite nice. It's sort of like a Jesco sort of thing going on. We've got a little stripe on the side. We got those two little pinstripes on the bonnet. That's quite nice. It's quite subtle. We got those two little stripes there in black now, and the black one on the side. We can go for geometry. We've got street camo left, then we've got the full street camo, which is still a bit odd looking. we got the race street camo. I don't think Rockstar really had an idea of what liveries to put on this thing, so they just decided to throw everything on there. And we've got the Itasha 96. Um, I quite like the black um, overflood stripe, that looks quite good. I think it's got that little stripe on the side with the logo and the two little pinstripes on the bonnet there. That just adds a little bit of detail, but it does look quite good. So we'll go with that. Uh, the mirror options. Now, we don't actually have any mirrors on this thing. We can go ahead and add some mirrors in if we want to. Uh, we've got secondary version of those, carbon version and forged carbon. Um, they kind of look like Pagani sort of mirrors. Um, I don't know whether this thing looks right with mirrors. Um, maybe we'll go for the full carbon mirrors. They look quite good, actually. Um, it's a little bit of a mishmash of different supercars, this thing. So we've got Pagani sort of mirrors going on. We've got a Hennessy Venom sort of front end. The back end is from the full mania. And then we've got sort of some of the wings and stuff are definitely off of Jesco. It's a very odd car, to be honest, uh, but there we go. Respray we will come back to, but we do have primary, secondary, and trim colour options. Uh, the roof next. We can go for a stock roof. We've got a roof scoop. We can go for a secondary roof with the scoop. A carbon version of that and a forged carbon version. Then we have the extended roof scoop in primary. We have that in secondary, in carbon, and forged carbon. Then we have the full roof scoop, which goes right from the back to the front, which actually does look kind of cool. I do like that. We've got that in secondary and carbon and forged carbon. I'm going to go for the full roof scoop in primary. I think that looks pretty good. Actually, what does it look like in full carbon? Ooh, that does look kind of cool, I guess. Um, Because it kind of matches all of those carbon bits at the back there uh no i'm gonna leave it primary no we'll go for it in carbon actually it does look kind of cool uh, right skirt options next so we've got stock skirts we can go for carbon skirts uh we can go for the extended carbon and the winged carbon um i think we might just go for the carbon uh, don't really like the extended ones or the ones with the wings. Splitter options next. It's very difficult to see because they are black. But we've got the stock splitter. We've got the non-cutout splitter. We've got the non-cutout Mark 1. So that adds uh, some canards on there. We've got the Mark 2 version of that. Uh, so the canards are just a different shape. We've got the Mark 3 which adds some different canards. We've got the Mark IV, which has different shaped double canards and the tow loop there. We've got the extended splitter, split, extended splitter Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, and Mark IV. Then we've got the extended splitter with cutout. We've got that in Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, and Mark IV. Okay, we've got the Extreme Splitter, and we have a Mark 1, a Mark 2, a Mark 3, and a Mark 4 version of that. 
Um, I'm actually just going to leave the stock splitter because it has a little cut out there. I'm not really a fan of canards unless it's a proper race vehicle. Um, I think it looks kind of clean at the moment, so we'll just leave that how it is. The spoiler options we have next. So we do have, um, I believe this thing has active aero already. Looks like it does. Uh, we can go for a low ducktail. We've got a medium ducktail. We got large fins, so it just makes those fins on the back that are already there just bigger. Uh, we've got primary fins, we got secondary fins, forged carbon as well. Then we got a race wing, we got the flat wing, we got a floating wing. That looks very weird. The wing isn't big enough for the car. That looks a bit odd. We got primary floating wing. Secondary version of that and forged carbon. Then we got the competition wing. Do you need a drink? Uh, we got the Bubbles? split wing. So that's definitely like a Jesco style spoiler. We got a primary version of that, a secondary and a forged carbon. Then we got the overflowed wing. I'm not sure what vehicle that's off, but I've definitely seen that in GTA before. We've got that in primary, we've got that in secondary, and we've got that in forge carbon as well. And we finally have the GT wing, which looks way too big, this thing. And that's a lot. I'm actually not going to go for a spoiler, because one, I want to see whether the active aero actually works, which I think it does. But I'm a bit of a shame, it's a bit of a shame that um, we couldn't get rid of those little fins, because I'm not really a fan of them. They look a bit weird. It could have just smoothed the back out. They sort of stick up a little bit. Uh, but there we go. There's not really great spoiler options on this thing, in my opinion. But there we go. Sunstrip options next. We've got primary sunstrip, secondary, and plastic. You guys know my opinions on sunstrips. I'm not really a fan, so we're going to leave those off. Suspension options. It's sitting pretty high at the moment. There's quite a big arch gap. Uh, so we can go ahead and lower this thing. And that looks much better. So we'll go with the full competition suspension. We'll go ahead and turbo tune this thing. I don't know why there's turbo tuning on this thing. Because it's fully electric. So that is a little bit strange. But there we go. Um, then finally we'll choose some wheel options for this. Not really a fan of these electric looking wheels. So I'll find something that fits a little bit better. And then we'll go ahead and paint it. Okay, I've gone ahead and found these wheels. They're called Expressway. They're in the track category. And I've gone ahead and painted them black. They're just some sort of uh, generic six-spoke wheels. But I think they look quite good. Um, I'm not really a fan of those sort of covered wheels that a lot of electric cars have on them. I think they look a bit odd. Uh, but let me know what you guys think, whether you like these wheels or not. Uh, then we'll go ahead and tint the windows with a little bit of light smoke that certainly looks a little bit better and then we're just going to finish this thing off with some paint we'll go for a metallic paint the orange actually looks quite good i have to admit um the sort of like dark red might look quite good it looks a little bit like a pagani at the front there the formula red looks quite nice and the pearlescent is already torino red i'm happy with that that looks really really nice uh, we'll go ahead and does the secondary colour actually change anything? Um, oh, it's changing the colour of the brake calipers down there. Don't know if you guys can see that. So I guess we'll go ahead and we'll just make it black. That'll be Your fine. Did it change anything on the interior? Let's have a look. Did it change the stitching? Yes, it does change the colour of the stitching. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it black. I think that's fine. And then the trim color, we can actually change the whole interior to another color. Let's go ahead and make it uh, Torino red to match and see what that looks like. I think it's a bit too red. I think we're just going to go and leave it black, to be honest. And there we go. That is my final customization of the overflowed pipistrello very weird sounding name 
But let's go ahead, take this thing outside, we'll open up the doors, we'll drive it around a little bit and see what it's like. Well, here we are outside in the Pipistrello, and yes, it does actually have active aero, as you can see there, when you brake, it does flap up and down. When you slow down, the spoiler retracts back into the body. What are the NPC drivers doing in this game? Um, it actually doesn't look too bad now that we're outside. I like this paint job. Um, I think the colour looks really nice. And I like that little pinstriping livery. It just adds that extra little detail. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, what do I think of the driving of this thing? Well, let's accelerate a little bit here. It doesn't actually accelerate massively quickly. I thought it was going to be... A lot faster I mean it looks absolutely radical when you see this thing and it just really doesn't accelerate as fast as I thought now, like I said it is fully electric and the whole sort of selling point of electric vehicles is how fast they can accelerate because they have instant torque and what have you this thing really doesn't do that it seems to sort of get up to a bit of speed and then just stops accelerating you can see we're driving through the city here and it's just really underwhelming is the way to put it uh, so yes the performance of this thing is not great but let's uh, pull over and have a little look at the interior and the doors and what have you all right so here we are with the doors open and it does have these sort of like vertically opening doors. I don't really know what you call them. They're kind of like scissor doors. Um, and they sort of like fold vertically, I guess. Uh, like I said earlier, I like the front end of this thing. It looks very sleek, very nice. Especially with those mirrors now. It kind of looks like a sort of Pagani Huayra at the front end. The interior as well is quite nice, I have to admit. Um, it's uh, very sort of simple I don't know whether this is a custom interior for this car or whether it's been stolen out of one of the other vehicles I imagine it's probably been stolen out of another car but that's fine it suits this car quite well and then we get to the back and I think that's where this thing is let down obviously it's based on a real-life car which it looks very similar to the real car and I'm not a fan of the real-life car I have to admit but it's just a very random car for Rockstar to add into the game. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the lights then. So starting at the front, we'll go for some lights. And yes, those little bottom square lights actually do work. So you have those strips running all the way down the hood. They look uh, kind of cool actually. I do like how they look and the little lights underneath do actually work. And then on the back, we have these like really long glass sort of lights, just like the real car has. We'll go ahead and put the brakes on so you can actually see what they look like there. What are the NPCs doing today? They're being absolutely crazy. But yes, the brake lights are sort of down there. The reverse light is just that little square above the number plate, which you can see flashing there. So what is my final verdict on the Overford Pipistrello? Well, I'm not really a fan of the real car that it's based on. Um, I think the performance of this thing in GTA is just a bit lackluster, really. It's very underwhelming. And uh, I don't know. I think it was just a very random addition. I think Rockstar were just struggling for some vehicles to add. And they saw this thing and thought, yes, let's put that in there. But honestly, I think the GTA Online community is sick of electric vehicles. We just don't want any more of them. They're not very good in this game. They don't have the performance like the real cars they're based on. And there's so many more supercars that the community has been asking for for years. Things like the Honda NSX, which we still haven't got the original Ford GT40, things like that that the community has been wanting for years still haven't been added and yet we get something like this which nobody really cares about. But there we go, let me know what you guys think of this thing, was I a bit harsh on the critique, do you like this vehicle, do you like the customization that I've applied here? I do kind of like the front of it and I like this colour, I think it suits it kind of well. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be buying this thing in GT Online. And I hope that some of the 
future drip feed vehicles in this DLC are a little bit better than this. But make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any new customization videos when they do come out. I'm going to try my best to customize the new DLC vehicles as soon as they release. So if you don't want to miss that, then make sure you do subscribe. And if you did enjoy this video, then make sure to drop a like on the video and comment down below what vehicle you're enjoying from this DLC so far. I'd like to hear from you guys in the comment section. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you in the next one.